welcome to My Career in Data, a podcast where we discuss with industry leaders and experts how they have built their careers. I'm your host, Shannon Kemp, and today we're talking to Samantha Clark from Panassas. With a robust catalog of courses offered on demand and industry leading live online sessions throughout the year, the Dataversity Training Center is your launch pad for career success. Browse the complete catalog at training.dataversity.net and use code DVTalks for 20% off your purchase. Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Officer at Dataversity and this is my career in data, a Dataversity Talks podcast dedicated to learning from those who have careers in data management to understand how they got there and to talk with people who help make those careers a little bit easier. To keep up to date in the latest in data management education, go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Today, we are joined by Samantha Clark, the Vice President of Channel and Partnerships at Panassas. And normally, this is where a podcast host would read a short bio of the guest. But in this podcast, your bio is what we're here to talk about. Sam, hello and welcome. Thank you, Shannon. I'm very excited to be here. Oh, I'm so excited to, to learn what your journey has been and more about what you're doing. So tell me, you're the VP of Channel and Partnerships at Panassas. So tell me, what type of business is Panassas? Panassas is a data platform, so we uh, store and protect people's data, uh, and we are a high-performance data platform, so we make it very easy for lots and lots of users to access lots of data really fast and efficiently and easily. So we, we serve people that are solving the biggest genomics problems in the world. We service people that are building amazing aeroplanes or spaceships. Uh, we work on the really big problems with our customers. So that's why I love being here. Oh, how fun is that? You just touched many of my geek points. <laughs> <laughs> fun you get to work with, uh, with space programs. So as a VP of Channel and Partnerships, what's your typical week work like? Ah, lots of meetings. And and now meetings in person, which is great to be back out and talking to customers. It's uh it's, it's what I really enjoy doing and understanding how we how we solve people's problems. Uh as as partnerships uh, VP, I look after our uh, resale partners, our technology partners, uh folks that want to take our product and, and rebrand it or or put it on their own platforms. Um, so really, it's finding alignments, finding partnerships that are win-win. As uh, as one of my dear leaders once told me, the best partnerships are coalitions of the willing. So folks that want to build a build a, a business together or or see the value in each other. So those are the kind of partnerships I look for. Oh, I love that. So so tell me, what kind of um, what's a typical problem that your clients come to you to help for help with? Um, so one area we're working in, for example, is, is uh, life sciences and uh, cry OEM, which is a, a new kind of um, science where folks are taking 3D images of proteins and figuring out how to how to solve uh, well 3D videos of program of proteins and and solve some big challenges in the genomic space. Um, and a lot of them have been a typical scientist, you know, they've had a little hard drive on their desk or they've had a, a small data system or they've borrowed some IT equipment to get themselves up and running. Um, and they've realized that they, they're really starting to make some progress and they want a solution that's going to enable them to do their science uh, easily, efficiently and you know, at the speed they want to. And so they'll come to us and, and say, hey, can you help me with my you know, petabyte scale problem. I've got I've got a petabyte of data and I want it, I want to be able to access it. I want all my scientists to be able to access it. So that's that's the sort of challenges that we we solve. Oh that's very cool. Mm -hmm. I, I love that a lot. Um and and again what cool industries that you're you're working with. So so tell me Sam is is this what you wanted to be when you grew up? Like when you were six years old, did you say I'm going to be the VP of Channel and Partnerships at Panassas at, at this company that solves large data problems? What was the dream? I think if I'd known uh, this career existed, I probably would have. But um, <laughs> <laughs> honestly, I didn't really know it existed. Um, and I think that's that's one thing I uh, I think about a lot because we. 
we struggle with women, especially coming into our industry. And I think about how if I'd known this career existed at a young age, I, I probably would have, you know, moved to this path faster. But I uh, I started out wanting to be a teacher. I had a a great nice. uh, career guidance person who who told me uh, that's great. We all want, you know, we all want more teachers. But why don't you think about going and doing, you know, an engineering degree or or something? Um, and if you really still want to come back to teaching, you can teach engineering. And uh, that set me on a path to become an engineer and uh, move through my career with lots of guidance from great people and uh, sales and partnerships. But uh, it was. It was some of the best advice I ever got. But uh, you know, being a teacher yeah. is great, but being able to solve some of these big challenges is amazing. Wow, that's that's very cool. So so you went into engineering, um, and then uh so where did you go from there? So what was like the first job after after uh getting your degree there? Uh, my first job was designing ovens, doing the hardware electronics for ovens. Um, wow. And it, it was a really cool role. It was a company in New Zealand yeah. that uh, really supported graduate students coming into, into their first role. And uh, I had a boss that gave me a lot of leeway to own, own a program. Um, so I got to not just design the electronics, but also design how to test the electronics, how to train people on the electronics, how to define how people that you know all the parts around the electronics should work and so I really got a, a great opportunity first off and I think you know my advice to people coming into into the data world is find leaders that are going to let you explore and find the things that you enjoy doing because that really set me on a path that let me uh, move into the roles I've, I've joined later. So, so tell me about that. So where did you go from there? That's very interesting, very interesting start. Uh, so there I went to a company called Zyrotex, which was my first data storage company. Uh, and I became a project manager. So given, you know, I got to design and do all the bits around it. I really enjoyed kind of that, that a holistic view of a product, if you like. And so I got to, um, work with the engineering teams, manufacturing teams, all the different folks. Uh, and I think, you know, people coming into, into data, as we're talking about here today, um, if you're not quite sure which path to take, being in the project management or the product role, you get to see lots of different parts of the organizations and how products come together. So it's a great role if you're not quite sure where you want to want to specialize. Um, Oh, I love that a lot. So, so, um, what made you decide to get into project management and and away from the the engineering design? And um, was it was it to explore? And and how did you build up that skill? Yeah, absolutely. It was kind of building on the engineering. I got to you know, take those engineering skills, be able to speak the language, but also I got to interact with customers and understand what they needed and really uh, use my engineering background to to solve big, solve challenges, which I love. Problem solving, I think, you know, sales, yeah. project management, the kind of the side of the world is, is all about problem solving for our customers and building the right solutions. Oh, I love that. Okay, so then what was next? Uh, from there, I went into uh, customer facing roles. So I started off as a account manager and I um, worked with many of the great storage platforms in the industry so I got to work with the likes of you know, data domain and store symbol and pure storage and many many companies in high growth from kind of the, the back end if you like we did their hardware and uh, I saw how exciting the industry was and and what sort of challenge they were solving and when the opportunity came up to to work in if you like the full solution business where we do the software and, and the platform um I, I jump right in so it's one of the reasons you know I joined Panasis is I love being able to provide the whole solution to the customers I love that so so it truly you know we were uh, talking a little bit this about this before we started the the podcast you know it's following your passion like it's just your passion led you to so many different places and it sounds like some good mentors along the way to to take you on your journey to where you are now yes uh some excellent mentors so uh my, my CEO and my leader today are folks that I've worked with for a long time now and uh I, I follow them 
they, uh, my CEO, for example, is a person that kind of made probably the biggest change in my career trajectory um, by recommending that I learn how to speak in public. So in the old days, I would uh, stand up and do a presentation. I was a little mouse. And this was something I was really passionate about. And then I'd, I'd stand up. But he was like, Sam, you, you just go and go and figure out how to how to be able to present and share everything in a way that people can absorb and makes an impact. And so I went and joined Toastmasters, um, which was an excellent experience. I'd recommend it to anyone. And uh, that really uh, enabled me to move into kind of more of the leadership roles and, and be able to make a bigger impact with, uh, in my career. Oh, I love that. So you, you pushed yourself out of your comfort zone a bit to, to, uh, to make that leap. Absolutely. Visit dataversity.net and expand your knowledge with thousands of articles and blogs written by industry experts, plus free live and on-demand webinars covering the complete data management spectrum. While you're there, subscribe to the weekly newsletter so you'll never miss a beat. Oh, I love that. So, you know, um, so uh, and what has been your biggest lesson so far in your career? My biggest lesson in my career is that the the people you get to work with and your leaders uh, make just the biggest impact to your to your life. So um, I think we can all we can all be passionate about a certain role or a certain problem we're solving, but um, to be able to grow and to be able to really excel in your position, then the folks that you work with um, make a big difference. So choosing choosing a team as you move into the data world, if you're considering it, choosing a team yeah. that you know, is supportive, is communicative, is very positive about where they want to go in the world and, and are trying to do good things, I think is, is super important. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. And, um, you know, and that's the great thing about data, right, is there's so... every It's in every industry. Every industry uses it. Every company uses it. There, So you can really the door is open wide to mix passions right so yeah absolutely I, I joined this role for you know for the team but also you know we're a very usable enterprise uh, based data platform uh, with incredibly high performance and so therefore as people move from either doing science or doing doing some of those big challenges and move into the world of AI for example we enable that and we let people do the things that they really want to do with data and we protect their data and make the data accessible and, and ensure that it's uh, it's safe. So um, we really enable people to do exciting things with data uh, in an easy way. And I love that you've followed your passion, like I said, again, just to not only for engineering and, and just but in problem solving in general and helping other people solve their problems, which is, which is very cool. So, uh, so tell me, do you see, uh, so, to, so having worked with data now for a while and in your current job, what is your definition of data? So my definition of data, I'm going to address this a slightly different way, because I'm going to talk about more the the scale of data, because I think, you know, over the, over the years, data has changed. Think back to, maybe the 70s, there was, I think we we figured out when I was working with Seagate and we were 100% focused on how much data there was in the world. And in the 70s, if you took all the data that had been created in the world, it would have filled up a 10 terabyte drive. So there were three and a half drives that would fit on your desk. As mobiles came out and, and people started taking digital pictures, that data growth uh, increased exponentially. Uh, and now we're in the in you know, data 4.0 where machines are creating data so whereas before maybe the main biggest data generation um side if you like would be a movie set where you're creating you know 40 terabytes of data where there's lots of people running around actors like sound all those good things now an autonomous, an autonomous vehicle will create 100 terabytes of data by itself it doesn't even need to drive it right so i think the scale of data is is kind of how I how I define data so we're really focused on those petabyte scale challenges uh, and as the as the world evolves you know, folks talk about data being being the new new oil or the new gold um, 
it's making it um, accessible, shareable, um, ensuring it's safe. And so really that's, that's how I define data by its scale. Love it. So and how do you work with it? Work with data. With data. <laughs> <laughs> I work with data every day, I think. You know, um, I became a new mom recently. So oh, congratulations. Filled with uh, pictures of my son. That's my gold data. Uh, and, but I think, you know, as I look at our customers and how they use it, and and uh, that's where I really think about every day how we make it easier. So people want to store data on prem or close to them. I was just talking to a scientist just earlier this morning and saying how, you know, people who put their lifeblood into their experiments, they want to be able to touch their data almost, they want to see where it is. But, you know, the cloud is, is, is uh, an amazing, amazing way to, you know, transform your IT infrastructure. And so making people feel comfortable with on-prem and cloud and, and having their data where it is, the things that I think about every day. Wow, very, very nice. So do you see the importance of data management and the number of jobs working with data increasing or decreasing over the next 10 years and why? Absolutely see it increasing. I think, you know, spoke about that, that data generation, the amount, sheer amount of data increasing exponentially with, with machines creating data. You know, it's not just autonomous vehicles. You know, now I think uh, a plane downloads a petadite of data after a long journey with all the sensors and all those, all those uh, metrics that can now be captured uh, with, as we evolve into the world of IoT. Um, and so just the amount of data that's available is um, is increasing exponentially, but also the way we use data with AI has changed incredibly. So things like being able to um, expedite a years of experimentation, kind of like we did over COVID by, you know, generating an AI version of the experiment and, and coming to those results just so much quicker makes the data role so important. A lot of people worry that AI will replace data jobs, but there's so many humans needed to manage that, yeah? Absolutely. I read a great um, article from a friend who's in, in product marketing talking about how AI is really like a compiler. You know, when we first started building code, there was ticket stamps and we had to compile everything from you know basic language etc manually um, now we can build a, a program with a you know a GUI a, something we can we can look and see uh, essentially and AI is kind of like that like you say it's it's taking our data and it's making it easy to use with a lot of tools rather than having to do it all ourselves but the data roles are just going to keep increasing as we see the the things that can be done with data. Absolutely. So what advice then would you give to people looking to get into a career in data management? You touched on a couple points already, but any additional uh, advice? To your point, finding something you're passionate about, uh, finding that why, what, what problem do you really want to solve? Um, what, what makes you motivated? Being a new mom, I, uh, I think about making the world better for my son as, as we go forward. So, you know, global warming or um, things that are, are really, uh, you know, challenging us. And I think um, having, finding something that you find you are passionate about and, and then putting skills on top of that, like the engineering background or the data science background or, or whatever skill you bring um, to it. Is a, is a brilliant combination to be to be successful. Absolutely. Uh, Sam, this has been so great. So I'd be remiss though if I didn't ask, you know, if people wanted to learn more about Panassas, how would they how would they look you up? We are on LinkedIn. We have a great website, panassas.com. Uh, we have a lot, a lot of information on our website about how you can use Panassas, how, how our customers use Panassas today, what they love about it. Um, we have customers uh, like NASA who stood up on at a supercompute this year and talked about how we'd uh, 
managed to make their lives so much easier. They show this great graph where uh, we have, they've kind of been running about 70% uptime. So only using only being able to use their data resources about 70% of the time. Um, and they started using Manassas and it came up to uh, 96%, I think, and, and how they could you know, use a quarter of a person to manage it versus a whole person or 85% of a person. And so they could put, more resources to doing what NASA does well. So uh, that sort of thing is available on our website if you want to learn more about NASA and the and the things we solve. So I have to ask you, what's the, what's the largest amount of data that you that you've seen? So the large amount of data I have seen, uh, we have one customer who's uh, in the oil and gas industry that's storing over seventy five petabytes of data themselves. Uh, but Panassis uh, is responsible for storing and protecting uh, ex exabytes of data throughout the world. So we're really proud of that. Very cool. That's just, it, it's still stunning, you know, in this day and age to, to hear your numbers like that. It, it's really, truly amazing. amazing. So um, Sam, thank you so much. Anything else you want to add before we wrap up? Uh, Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I love, as I spoke about earlier, I think, you know, knowing a career in data was available in my younger years would have would have got me very excited. And and one of the things I'm passionate about is bringing, you know, young people, especially women into STEM and, and bring that diversity into data diversity. Uh, and so I think um, I take any opportunity like this to really talk about what an interesting and challenging space it is to work in and encourage young people to, to come join us. Oh, I love that. Yeah, we've started our own initiatives to to bring in more women into data management and governance as well. So that's really exciting. Um, Sam, thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure to chat with you today and learn about and congratulations on your new baby boy. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time, Shannon. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. And thanks to all of our listeners out there. If you'd like to keep up to date on the latest podcast and in the latest in data management education, you may go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Until next time, stay curious, everyone. Thank you for listening to Dataversity Talks, a podcast brought to you by Dataversity. Subscribe to our newsletter for podcast updates and information about our free educational webinars at dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Thank you.